Okay, so being a musician is not the easiest path of life. Trying to make steady income while getting out there and gigging and performing and recording. It just takes time. Some people are really successful at it while others struggle for their entire lives. In this video, I'm going to try to help you understand how to make this music thing work for a career. Just note, this is about playing an instrument for a living. It's not about creating music and selling it. I'm more talking about all of us who play drums, piano, guitar, who just want to take our instruments and just do that as a career. Okay, so I'm gonna break this up into sections and then within each section, I'm gonna give some advice on how you can make it work financially. All right, let's go. Playing gigs. This is what everyone goes to when you think of being a musician for a living, is playing gigs and earning money for it, right? This is without a doubt the hardest way of making decent income by being a musician. If you really wanna make a decent amount of money, you have to play dozens of gigs a month to kind of meet that goal. That's not a problem if you don't mind playing gigs night after night after night which is what most of us actually want to do however i'll come from my side i don't want to do this i'm okay with playing five to six gigs a month i don't want to be playing 20 gigs a month so what would i do to kind of make gigging work is I would join a corporate band. Corporate events happen and businesses want entertainment for those corporate events and they hire bands and who has the most money big businesses if you want to target an even higher paying market weddings i got married a few years ago and let me tell you the wedding scene is flipping expensive everything with wedding in front of it costs like three times as much including bands and entertainment so if you really want to make a lot of money by playing the drums or playing the guitar i highly recommend joining a wedding band and getting booked every weekend the only downside to this is that you may be stuck playing songs that you don't want to play because at weddings, everyone just wants to hear all the popular songs. You might not enjoy playing those. However, it feels good making a lot of money playing those songs as opposed to making no money playing original songs at some venue. Just to like double down on the fact that you can make a lot of money at weddings, I went to the internet's best research tool, Reddit, to find out how much people are paying for wedding bands. Recording. All right, so the days of being hired as a session musician to go record in a professional studio are still here, but they're not as abundant as they were decades ago because people now just make music on their laptops. So how do you make recording work and how do you make it something that brings in steady income and is reliable? You gotta set up a home studio so that you yourself can offer recordings to people. So basically you are your own studio who can offer drum tracking services. And this means that you can cater to people lower than like professional bands looking for professional albums. You got a lot of people just wanting to make their own personal music who want realistic, authentic drums in their songs and they will hire you to record those drum parts. So if you have a home studio, you can sign up to a platform like Fiverr and offer your services there. The more you grow that, the more popular you'll get on the platform, the more people will reach out to you wanting your realistic and authentic drum parts. You don't even need to be super clued up with audio production to do this because I've seen a lot of guys just use electronic drum kits. Electronic drum kits are already mixed and mastered and all of that, so you just plug in a USB cable and track drums to the song, you deliver it and there you get a payment teaching okay so firstly before i get into the practicalness of being a music teacher if you want to make teaching work and you want to earn a considerable amount of money from this you need to understand that teaching is not a backup plan for musicians if you view it in that way you're going to resent it and you're not going to be a good teacher you're not going to be passionate about making this teaching business work and you're not going to be able to earn as much money as you can you have to have the mindset that teaching is like the coolest thing you're taking your knowledge and you are imparting it on people and then the goal is for those people to get better than you and then that cycle continues and it is so cool that this is how as musicians and as a music industry, it's how we keep getting better. So that's the goal of teaching. The next goal is to get as many students as you can so that you can make up a considerable amount of income. I'm gonna use Mark Johnston as an example here. If you don't know who that is, he is one of the best drum teachers in the world. Everyone knows him as that teaching guy. If you want advice on how to be a good teacher, you gotta just look up to him. I saw this video a while ago of him explaining his early days of teaching and how he got students. Basically, he went to every school that he could that didn't have a music department so drum lessons weren't offered at those and he did a free entertaining kind of drum 
concert, and at every school he went to, he gave out cards offering a free drum lesson. Those kids would have seen him thinking drums are the coolest thing ever, and they would have taken those cards to their parents, and the parents then would have sent them for that free lesson, and then that would turn into regular lessons, and eventually, Mike had too many students to even fit in a week. That is a brilliant way of finding students, and it is just one of many. If you're able to absolutely fill your timetable up with students using a method like that, you could charge $30 for half an hour and fit eight students in a day, making $1,200 a week. Freelancing. All right, so this is not really playing your instrument or teaching your instrument, but it is using your knowledge of your instrument to do some sort of other work. The gigging economy on the internet is bigger than it has ever been. People are looking to hire musicians to do all sorts of things. So this includes graphic design, making like thumbnails on YouTube, editing videos, writing articles for blogs. I'll use an example. If I wanted to hire a video editor for my YouTube channel, I would have to do one who is a musician because I teach people how to play drums and an editor who doesn't understand drum notation, who has no idea what this means, is gonna struggle to like, make my videos work so i would need to hire someone who's either a drummer or who is savvy to music notation another example you got all these blogs on the internet if you reach out to these guys and say hey i can write blog articles for your guitar website you might just get a regular gig that plays monthly that can supplement playing gigs and teaching because you can do this type of thing in your downtime social media okay so this is not like a job per se but it is such a big thing that leads to the production of income and it is seriously powerful. So before I get to the actual money making aspect, you as a musician should be growing social media pages so that all these other things that I've already spoken about have more traffic, more eyes, more potential. The more views you get on your Instagram page, increases the likelihood of someone reaching out to you wanting to hire you for a gig. Think of your followers as potential customers or potential connections. It's like the new way of networking, growing social media pages and talking to different people and showing people what you can do with the instrument. Okay, so how do you make money through social media? I'll use YouTube as an example. Once you have a big enough platform, you can then turn Google AdSense on so you make ads on how many views you get. This is not really reliable, but it is like a nice bit of up and down income to come as you're posting videos. The real money from social media pages is to get sponsors and endorsements. Okay, so I'm gonna start with endorsements because I grew up thinking that you don't get paid for being like an artist for a company, which is still true, but the landscape is changing. It was drilled into me that you shouldn't think that you can make money from being a Sabian artist, which probably at the moment is true, but you just have to look at a company like Alesis. They recently released this kit called the Alesis Nitro Max, and I have been seeing a lot of YouTube drummers reviewing and like demoing this product. And those YouTube drummers have like no, they're not Alesis artists. So Alesis has paid these guys to show off their product. Whereas in the past, you would think that an Alesis artist is actually just getting free gear in exchange for giving Alesis exposure. It just makes sense with the whole online thing. There are so many YouTube personalities and TikTok personalities that have got massive popularity. So let's take El Esparo Siberiano, for example. Millions of views a day. I, as a company, would totally pay this guy to show my products and I wouldn't stick to the rigid thing of no, endorsements don't actually pay you. He can just make bank showing multiple different products and getting exposure for all these drums, all these symbols. That's just something to think about as time goes on. I really predict within the next few years that more brands are gonna catch on to this model. They will sell more stuff by actually just paying YouTubers to show it. Another way of making big money here is to do sponsors. So like a good one is software companies will sponsor a lot of YouTube videos. A good example would be like metronome apps, part remover apps. These companies are all fighting each other to get customers. So you as someone with a big social media page can do videos about their software and you'll get paid a bunch. Okay, so there are five ways of making money. If you stick to two of those or three of those, you're gonna have a pretty good chance of making a stable income as a musician. One last thing I wanna talk about is the question of, do you need to study music to kind of have a better chance 
at making it as a musician? Yes and no. So let's check out what I'm gonna call the Matt Gasker effect. Matt Gasker studied at Berklee College of Music, right? Which is one of the best music colleges in the world. Everyone who is an aspiring musician thinks <laughs> about going to Berkeley. Matt Gasker has become one of the best drummers in the world, but he was once a college student at Berkeley and he had friends that would hang out with him. They'd probably play video games on a Friday night. Fast forward a decade and those friends are probably still in contact with him and they've all gone on separate music ventures but you never know when that guy that Matt Gasker was playing FIFA with will reach out to him and say hey I got this big gig I thought of you do you want it? So that's the value in studying music at a college is you network like crazy and then the potential is massive. You've got all these people around you that may or may not get really successful with their music careers. Otherwise, it's a complete waste of time. It's a complete waste of money. There are so many people with so much debt and they're already struggling to like make music work and it's just, it's just this vicious cycle. All right, cool. There are some practical tips. There are some ways of making this music thing work. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video.